because I've never had Cheng Fun like that in my life. Oh. And usually... <laughs> The KO? Oh, that's good. With the chicken, the yeah. curry. A couple of your owners here used to work at T Bar Starry. Oh, <laughs> yeah. shout out to Danny from T Bar Starry. <laughs> Downtown Flushing, Queens is like none other. Roosevelt and Main Street is the third busiest intersection in New York City, only behind Herald Square and Times Square. So as fast as Manhattan moves, so does Flushing. We're here to try all the newest spots in the zone and see how chefs and owners are innovating to provide something new to an already competitive food world. Before we get into it, I'm gonna need you to hit that like button and let's go. Yo, Perry, we're on Flushing right now. There are so many street stalls, people setting up tables on the side of the street. Is this normal for this area? Uh, no. Usually it's not like this. But I, I don't personally buy anything off of them, but... <laughs> it's kind of cool to see, Did I guess. you say that it adds a certain energy to the street? Yeah, it does. We go cop some stuff on the street. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> right. Okay, Perry, first up on our 2021 Flushing food crawl. What do we got? We got rice rolls. It's a modern take on it. They got uh, all different flavors from different countries in the world. You know, it's a new take on it. So they're trying to attract uh, probably a younger generation. And this is owned by your friends, right? Yeah, my friends. All right, let's check it out. Chef Rich, where are you from? Singapore. Singapore, oh. Harry, you got a favorite flavor here? Uh, I love the Singapore one. It reminds me of the chili crab when I'm back in Singapore. One of my favorites. Real quick, right next door to uh, Rolls Rice, they got this Qingdao restaurant. This spot feels really, really authentic, almost like a spot in China. Anytime I'm at the Shandong spot, I gotta show love. All right, you guys, we have six different flavors here at Rolls Rice. I'm gonna go with my favorite, the Singapore. Here, I have TPE for Taipei. I have a uh, Malaysian curry chicken for the Kuala Lumpur, so. Rolls, Rolls Rice. Rolls Rice. Oh, that's good. Oh. It's good. This, you know, you got the shrimp inside, the sweet, spicy. You know, brings me back to Singapore, man. You mean the chili crab? The chili crab. <laughs> Yo, I really like the TPE one. It tastes like a different kind of chang fun dish, except just rolled up in an easy to eat format. Next three, Perry, you're the host. Since I'm from Hong Kong, I gotta go with the HK one. I gotta check it out. I got the BKK, that's Bangkok. Andrew, you've been to Bangkok. I haven't. Yeah. So maybe you should take this one. Oh, please. <laughs> this is the uh, the Kaohsiung joint. Round, Round two. two. You know, I was kind of skeptical of this one because it was sticky rice wrapped in steamed rice wrap. But um, I would say it worked out. Oftentimes, I think the Hoi Fong Sriracha does overpowered dishes, but it works perfectly here, guys. It's packing the flavor. The Hong Kong one reminds me of something my grandma would make. So, you know, it brings me back, nostalgic. Yo, I gotta go with the KL one because I've never had Cheng Fun like that in my life. Oh. And usually... <laughs> the KO? Okay. Oh, that's good. With the, with the chicken, the yeah. curry. It's yep. a close one between the KL and the Singapore. Of course, the chef is from Singapore. This flavor for the chili crab, it's usually very often expensive to get because that dish is expensive. You have to get it with crab, but you get the flavor and the essence here for Ooh. $6. Yeah. Right next to them, they got Qingdao restaurant. We got to try this real quick. They got some really authentic dishes here. I'm going to dig into uh, these dumplings right here. Okay. This is a Yosu Saobing. Pretty basic, you know, a lot of northern breads. Just layered. Here I have this tzema dabing, which is a sesame big pancake. And you look at how thick that is, bro. Wow, look at that. So I'm gonna dip it in this millet kanji, and the millet kanji is very traditional. So is this like the traditional like breakfast? Yeah, the real gummer breakfast. How was the northern pot stickers? They're a little flatter than the, your usual pot stickers, but um, good. So mala tang I usually have in flushing. Yo, this is the one I like. I like Yo. the beef mala tang, the noodle. I'm gonna dip this uh, yoshu, mm. yoshu bing in there. Mm, mm. Good. Well, I want to know what is this? Oh, this is a uh, a treasure rice. That's all you. Wow, first time mm. eating. Honestly, it was better than I thought. They got some orange peel in there. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, pretty good. All right, you guys, we are wrapping up here at our first two spots. Man, rolls rice. We just threw the Qingdao joint in there. This is a house made herbal tea straight from rolls rice. Yo, I think both these spots would be great for breakfast. Well, saying there's such high traffic. You know, if people want to come grab quick breakfast, quick lunch, you know, there's a perfect spot to come by. All right, we're here with the owners, Vin and Sam. What was your concept in tying in all these different flavors into the Trunk Fun? So we wanted to get people to feel that sort of influence where you come in you get to taste asia you get to taste bangkok we're really hoping in the future we can put a lot of different types of stuff onto the steamed rice roll think of the rice roll as a canvas he yeah. said the rice roll is a canvas like an air force one i wanted to modernize it i wanted to urbanize it and create this kind of excitement around it next 
up, we've got Tiger Sugar. You know the name. You guys heard of Tiger Sugar, but this is the first one in the US. It started with this and then it just blew up all over. Tiger Sugar has got to be the boba chain that's kind of responsible for pushing through that brown sugar tread. The brown sugar flavor was like 10X, long all lie, is very sweet very decadent. Yo, I cannot believe they have a $1 brown sugar latte. You want to hold a thing and I put a fucking oh, yeah. on the top? Anything of flushing blows up. Bro, I am captivated by that pudding. Bro, I'm making boba. I'm the boba maker. All right, so I got the classic. And this is the new drink with the pudding. Tiger, Tiger sugar. sugar. What do you think it is about the brown sugar flavor at Tiger Sugar? It's the, the quality of the sugar, you know, the consistency. Taiwanese people, they care very much about the tea and they care very much about the milk. So when it came to the brown sugar, I had no doubt that they're gonna take very good care of it and, and make sure it's of top quality. So man, Tiger Sugar, if you guys are into the brown sugar milk, this is still probably the best one. Our next two spots are actually almost right next door to each other and they're open by the younger generation, yep. right? Maxi Noodles is famous for their wonton. This is like the most authentic Hong Kong wonton. Yeah, let's check it out. I'm getting Yo, Hong Kong it's, vibes crazy, yeah. Yo, and it's kind of a small spot, so the smells of the wonton circulating in here. I feel like I've been transported. Maxi, tell us about your spot. In Flushing, you know, we have a lot of like Cantonese cuisine, but not so much like Hong Kong style noodle shop. We specialize only like, you know, wontons, dumplings, like the few, six, you know, the six toppings that I have, we mainly just focus on that. You guys are just doing it so well. Because a lot of the times, I will be honest, wonton mean, it does kind of get overlooked sometimes. People just put it on their menu, but they don't, Think about making it great, but this is what you're doing, and yeah. I love the mission. What are we looking at on the drink section? So this is uh, honey lemon, lemon tea. This is the coffee, and this is the milk tea. Can I get a yin yang? I got you. Oh! <laughs> Their milk tea is legit. What's the big difference between a wonton and a dumpling? So the dumpling has vegetable versus the wonton doesn't. What's your favorite dish? My favorite, um, definitely the wonton tea. A lot of people's imitation shark fin soup is, is not that good, but you guys, this is valid. You gotta add some of the red vinegar and the white pepper. That's okay. how we do it. Okay, okay. Hit me. Imitation shark fin, guys. Like Super to clean tasting, chunky. too. What are you guys going with, man? For me, I got the cha cha and me. I'm gonna go for the lo mein right here. Guys, this is the classic right here. Maxi's Maxi noodle. noodle. It's super silky. Fish ball. Nice and bouncy. These are super plump, very high quality. We need this in the city. Let's fire them. Uh, even the fish ball. Fish ball is really good. Mm. Beef stew is really good. Tender. Wow. Mad tender. One ton mean, five out of five. Valid. It's valid. I'm saying Straight it. Straight up. I don't know what it is, but they make it so light and fresh here. It's like, you definitely could eat this every day. This is one of the best dumplings I've had in New York. Yo, this is a Hunan guy. Food Panda working hard. All right, Perry, we just walked one door down from Maxi's and we're here at TZ. What do you love about the spot? Their tea is different from other bubble tea spots that I've been to. We're with Andy, the owner right here, man. What is it about Taiwanese tea that makes it so good? Because the high mountain. This brand is from Taiwan. Oh. And then we compare many different brands. <laughs> you cannot find any other brand that has the same taste. All right, TZ. That's the brown sugar boba tea. Well, oh, I've real taro jammed in here, man. You can see yeah, it. Fr fresh taro. Fresh Every taro. Day. Deep roasted oolong milk and the uh, apple four season tea. We got passion fruit, orange house special milk tea. Go in. TZ. What oats in it? It's like I'm just oh. drinking milk and taro. This is so good actually. It's almost like a dessert Whoa. in itself. All right, let me tell you this. It does taste different. I just tried the apple tea. They use a whole Fuji apple in this. We all double fisting right now. For me, <laughs> I might like... have to go with the house special milk tea just with the oatmeal in it. I'm about the oats and the boba. That's pretty damn good. <laughs> That's good. You guys are killing it. Cool aesthetics. Cool Shout out to you. Great you, tea. Man. Shout out. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sure. I didn't know you guys were freaking East Coast. Like, yeah. We'll totally get together, man. Let's freaking do it. All right, you guys, it was four and a half, about five years since the last time we did a flushing food crawl. I remember that this building was kind of like not finished. You know, there was nothing here. And now it looks like ultra modern. Yep. Well, that leads us to our next spot, Spot Dessert. Actually, the people who started it are from Queens and they actually more blew up in the city at their East Village location, but then they came back to Flushing and opened up a location here a few years ago. They have a variety of different desserts. Very original, right? Yep. Very, very aesthetically focused. All right, you guys, we're in front of Spot Dessert. This is the matcha lava cake. Wow. Ooh. Ooh. Guys, you know, over the past few years, I've seen lava cakes blow up. Like, everybody got one yep. now. Dirt Cup is dope because that's something you really eat when you're a kid yep. with kind of like gummy worms and stuff like that. Wow, it's like a cake 
dirt cup. This looks good. Let's go. Spot, Spot dessert. dessert. I'm mm. gonna eat some of that with some of this. Wow. The best thing about spot dessert, you know, I, I come with my friends, everyone picks their own, and then you, you share it with everyone. All right, the last thing we got to try here at spot dessert before moving on to our next spot is their new mochi brownie. I've been meaning to try this. It is a brownie with a layer of mochi sandwich in between. Mochi, mochi brownie, brownie. Ooh, here at spot dessert. It's warm too, they warm it up. That added something to the brownie because you're so familiar with brownies, you eat them in first, second, third, fourth, fifth grade, but you ain't had no mochi brownie oh, though. The consistency. You know, I'm not even the biggest dessert guy. I gotta give this spot a five out of five. On to our next spot. All right, our next spot is on Roosevelt and Main Street. It's called Play Date. Perry, this is like an arcade slash Asian eatery. The famous for the, the chicken sandwiches. It's not just a restaurant. Yep. You can play games too. Yep. This spot is popping. Hey, we are with the co-owners, Terry and Lena. This spot looks so cool. Can you describe it to us? This is a um, night market concept. Oh, is it like Sheila night market, Taipei yeah. type theme? Yeah, with a lot of small eats that you can grab and go. Um, and we really wanted to kind of get that daytime hangout spot for all of the youth in Flushing because there's nothing like this. So this spot is really meant and designed for like that next generation of right. people who hang out in Flushing. This is our fried chicken wing tips. This is the soy garlic chicken. This is our flame Hot Cheeto chicken. Sandwich. I've been seeing this on Instagram a lot. For That's this. the hype sandwich. You, the most hype guy here. Oh! Oh, you got, got mad wow, cheese in there the too. Inside. It's hot. Yo, Juicy. that's uh, a meat, right? Yeah, we only use dark meat on all of our chicken sandwiches. Those so are good. Get I like it. You guys are keeping it really like true to the Asian style, I feel like. Right, but I'm I gonna like try it. this nibble on this wingtip. Never waste the wingtip, see? Make a whole dish out of it. Mmm, it's like a really mini chicken wing. You're in Taiwan in the night markets, they have the tempura stuff where you mm. deep fry. Bring me back. It looks like all these machines here at Playdate are from Asia, right? Yeah, um, and we got them all customized to fit our Playdate brand. Soy garlic with Japanese coleslaw. Mmm, juicy. Well, that is a tasty sandwich. Flaming hot Cheetos, guys. Mm. Oh, it's actually hot Cheetos mixed with some of the Chinese spices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would definitely order this again. Guys, uh, you guys got to come to Playtate and check this out. Let me try. It's like five spice mixed with hot Cheetos. I've never had anything that tastes like this before. Playdate is a spot you must check out there doing things differently. It is for the youth, but yo, we're going to keep it moving. We're going to Kairi Ramen. It's a new Japanese uh, concept restaurant. They have uh, ramen and the almond rice. They have a nice outdoor build. Let's go check it out. Right next to Kira Ramen is flour and dessert. And I saw something that caught my eye. They have a rainbow milfie cake from France, but it's a rainbow version. We got to check it out. All right, guys, before we get into our Kyo Ramen, we have two desserts from next door, which is flour and dessert. Here we have coconut jelly. We have a rainbow Millie crepe right here. Of course, this is all the rage, all the wave. Perry, are you gonna go for the, the rainbow yeah. cake? Go for the rainbow cake, bro. I love doing the random pickup spots sometimes. You're just walking by a spot. That's good with the little crispy coconut shavings on top. Perry, how does it compare to uh, Lady M? Lady M smoother, but you know, it, it's up to par. That's solid. All right, ending it off here, of course, coming from next door, flour and dessert. Dessert. This is a stewed pear. Oh, it's super soft. I'm about to just. This is actually part of the imperial tradition, guys. Wow. Like the emperors in Beijing in the Forbidden Palace would eat. Wow, that's really soft. Like, mm. it kind of tastes like a European yeah. thing. Some similarities. Hold on, let me take a sip real quick. Sip it real quick. All right, the food has arrived here at Kyo Ramen. This is one of the hypest spots in Flushing, of course. And they do something really interesting here, Perry, that I haven't actually seen before. They do a couple ramen where they split it down the middle, like kind of like a yin-yang shape. So you get two flavors and everything? People really do want two ramens in one. Mmm. It's like a, a white miso. Yo, I had the tonkatsu. That was actually really good. The broth is really rich. It's going in. Try this. Ooh. Hey, pretty solid. Pretty solid, especially for getting two flavors in one. So we got the pork katsu with the almond rice. Um, this is one of the popular dishes that they recently brought out. We got uh, takoyaki. You said this is your favorite thing here, right? This, this is one of my favorite things here because you can't find it anywhere else, you know? Gooey. 
Last but not least, we got this Okonomiyaki. And as you guys know, there are different styles and regions that do this same dish. This is not the Hiroshima style. Mmm. Very eggy. Yeah, I the, like this. This is good. The, the one in Japan usually is mixed with noodles and they, you know, they make it in front of you. If flushy, man, you get the Asia Asia joints, man, because this is the type of Okonomiyaki I never even had before. Yeah. Definitely come here and get the couple ramen, guys. You get two for one. Two flavors in one bowl. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. All right, you guys, they could not let us go here at Kura Ramen without some dessert. You got raindrop cake. And then here you have your uh, matcha, matcha and red beans. They got flowers in there. You know what I noticed, man? Everything they try to do here at Kura Ramen, it's like you may have had it before if you're really into Asian food, yeah. but they, they're, they're adding one or additional one yeah, or two they elements. Go, they go the extra mile. All right. Let's try this. It was like a firm jelly matcha, but it still melted in my mouth. Sorry, Never had that texture before. All right, you guys, that does it for our 2021 Flushing Food Crawl. A lot of changes. Love to see some of the old legends still around, but it's just on a whole nother level. So much happened while we were filming this video. Harry, what do you make of it? It's a whole city in its own. As someone who's always been here, it's nice to see it grow. And shout out to everybody in this video. Shout out to all the other owners that are, you know, from Taiwan, from China, from, from America, from Hong Kong. It was just like, it was just really cool to see. Nice showing you guys around. Can't wait to do the Flushing part three. Hey, make <laughs> sure you guys come check out Image in Flushing, man. Crazy. On Northern Harry Boulevard. Style. They got some good deals. Let us know what other areas around New York we should check out and let us know if there was any hidden gems in the Flushing Main Street area that we missed because I know we couldn't hit everything. Check out Perry's links down below. And until next time, we out. Peace. Flushing got the activity. People really active with the activeness. Look, there's just a ton of stuff going on. Yo, every time I see New York doing construction, it really reminds me of China because they're just doing construction right next to people walking. This is like, Look, I'm right next to cars.